Hello, so my plan for the workshop build was to start it in the spring. The trouble is, the end of last year was freezing. It was actually frosty on the inside of the workshop and I nearly just gave up working. I ended up moving the bench inside and it made me think I really don't want to go back out there and I need to build a workshop. I looked into getting a metal workshop because they're so cheap and I nearly clicked the button and ordered one. But after thinking about it a bit more, I thought I'd never be happy with it. But I decided to move the schedule up as soon as I got back after Christmas. And the first thing I did was get the old shed taken down. The floor was rotten and so was the roof, but I put it free to collect on Facebook Marketplace and someone came and got it and they were really pleased with it. So they're glad to see that gone. And with it gone, I could really make a plan. Now, it's got a nice concrete slab under there that's nice and flat and level. It's a bit smaller than I would like, but I really want to keep the cost down. And if I can use this slab, then that will help. Now, initially I wanted it a bit bigger and I was going to build a frame and fill it in. But I took that all down and I'm going to reuse these timbers. I've already painted them with bitumen paint and some of them screwed together, but I can reuse them all to make a base. So with the ground clear, the first job was to work out the size I want the base to be. Now I can get them marked out and I'm going to cut them to length using my new mitre saw stand. Now, I don't have any wood long enough to do the whole length of the base, so I'm gonna get two different frames screwed together to make up the whole thing. And I'm just gonna get this all put together with some deck screws. Getting the first frame to put together, and I've ran out of the three meter long timbers I need already, so. Next job is to cannibalise the base in the tent. Right, now I've got those bits of wood, I can continue getting the big of the two frames screwed together. I want the whole thing to be four metres long. So now, if I get this positioned, I can work out how long I need to cut the timbers for the second frame. This smaller frame now can get screwed together exactly the same way as the first one. All right, both the frames are together, but I'm not going to attach them together next. I'm going to cut the noggins and get them put in. Now I can get these screwed into place. So I've got the two frames put together, but I'm not going to get them attached together yet, because as you can see, this is all made out of treated timber, but some of it 
it's got bitumen paint on. I got some bitumen paint left, so I think I might as well paint it all. But first, I'm gonna wash everything down and then leave it in the sun to dry because some of these timbers are pretty filthy. Oh, I'm certainly glad it's warmed up a bit. It's pretty frosty first thing, and I wouldn't want to be doing it, getting everything wet then. Now it's sunny, this should dry pretty quickly. Now a full sheet of OSB isn't going to quite stretch, so I'm just adding in some little extra bits of wood for support, which is good because it gives me something to do while I wait for the frost to actually clear. I'll spare you watch me do all this, but I'm going to get it all painted on one side, leave it to dry, flip it over and do the other side. So I've got this all painted and left it to dry. And as you can see, it's blooming cold out today. Now I can get these two frames pushed together and attached. Now to really lock the two frames together, I've got an extra piece that's gonna go down the side and span the joint. <laughs> Now, I don't want this frame just sat on the concrete slab. A few reasons, I don't want water getting up and I want some good airflow. And what I've got is this pile of paving slabs that were here in the house. So I'm gonna get them arranged under the frame to lift it up. So I've got this all up on blocks, nice bit of airflow underneath it, but it is still sat on stone and I want to lift it up some more. Now to raise it up a little more, what I have is some of these SPAX decking supports. They're kind of this rubber pads, so I'm just going to get them put under it. They come in packs of 25 and I got two packs because I wasn't sure how many I would need. I haven't used them all up but I'm definitely glad I bought the second pack of these. Right, this all seems really nicely supported, no flex in it, but before I can get the sheets on, I need to do two things. I need to check that it's all square and wait for this frost to all melt because I don't want to trap that under there, but the sun's out now. So I'm gonna get the tape and go from corner to corner and check square and just knock it around until I get it perfect. Okay, that's all square. But the next job is to get some sheets of OSB on, which are square themselves, so they will help pull anything square and keep it there. But I'm just gonna wait for this to dry off, so I'm gonna go inside and have a cup of tea. After that frosty start, the sun's really quite hot now, and this is all dried off, so I can get the boards on. <sighs> I'm going to start by getting it screwed down along this long edge. Then I can check how square it is on the side, make adjustments and get the rest of the screws in. That's better. So the workshops could be slightly larger than a sheet of OSB. So I just need to cut down some little strips to fill this in. And I'm gonna do that on the table saw. So 
So, with this installed, that's the floor all done. Now, this is some pretty thin OSB because I got it for the floor of the tent when timber prices were at their peak, I think. So when I finish the room, I'm gonna put a second skin of floor in to uh, make it much more stable. So that's the base all done. I've got a tarpaulin to get it all covered up. And then next job is to get the walls framed. So I'll see you next time for that. Mm -hmm.